All right, welcome one and all to an All Night is XR collaboration right for your workplace. I hope you're all feeling great. Things are looking up, right? Today, we are tackling one of the hottest topics in XR. Interest in remote team collaboration has skyrocketed over the past year, but people are still confused about what it is. And frankly, most people haven't really tried it. So we brought you the XR explainer in chief, Charlie Fink, the guy who actually wrote the book about remote collaboration to lead a two-day workshop on the topic where you can actually join a live walkthrough inside the leading virtual collaboration platforms. Today is a preview of the workshop to give you a taste of what it's like, but you'll have to join the workshop to find out how, who, and what really happened in the finale. Uh, my name is Orion Barr. I'm the founder of AWE and Super Ventures, and I have one question for you. Are you ready to get augmented? <laughs> oh, yeah. Yes, I absolutely am. Works so much better in, in person. Uh, so folks, by joining AWE, uh, you actually join a global community of XR professionals that meet in over 20 cities around the world, currently mostly online, so you can actually join it from your home. And I know you're all missing the good old days where we could actually meet in person. So AWE has vowed to make a big comeback at AWE USA this November in Santa Clara, California. And I can't wait to see you all, not as holograms, but as humans in the same room. And since you're now part of this incredible community, let's get social. Uh, for the latest news in AR and VR, follow our Twitter account. Check out our YouTube channel for the largest collection of YouTube videos about AR and VR, including meetups like this one. And for a weekly digest of the latest in AR and VR, every Friday in your inbox, sign up for the weekly spatial newsletter. Uh, before we get to our main attraction of the day, I want to tell you uh, a bit about what's coming up in the AW ecosystem. Uh, we talked about the event. There's uh, an all night about XR streaming that is coming up in uh, a week. Uh, of course, the virtual collaboration workshop, which we'll talk about today. And there's also a web AR workshop uh, that will come up pretty soon. So check it out on our website. Now, before we get to the main attraction of the day, I want to tell you just a little bit about the two-day virtual collaboration workshop in June, on June 5th and 6th. Uh, Charlie will explore and walk you through the leading collaboration platforms, Spatial, Verbella, Engage, Altspace, Glue, Flow Immersive, and Stream. And you'll also get access to exclusive market data from our partner, AR Insider. And since you joined us live today, you are in for a special discount. The first 10 that will sign up uh, can use this code on the screen to get $100 off. And now, uh, to get a preview of what you'll learn in the workshop, welcome your professor, one of the leading voices in XR, XR consultant, XR author, and now instructor at AW Academy. Put your hands together for the one and only Charlie Fink. Yay, me. So anyway, well, thank you, Worry, for that great introduction. And it is my pleasure um, to lead another weekend workshop where we visit the 10 or what we consider among the, the top virtual collaboration platforms. Uh, most, but not all of them are in VR, but all of them are cross-platform, uh, meaning you can access them PC and in many cases, your smartphone, as well as uh, VR, various kinds of VR and AR headsets. Uh, what is extraordinary about it is that we go as a group, right? You don't have a chance to test a collaboration platform of what it feels like to be in a group of 20 doing common tasks. That's the way to test a collaboration workshop. Very hard to do that on your own. Uh, a little bit about me. Uh, you guys know who I am, so we'll skip over that. 2020, in our rear view mirror, thank God. Uh, we learned a lot about video conferencing. We learned a lot about Zoom. Um, it, uh, it has been a lifesaver for most of us. I have to say I'm uniquely advantaged because I teach XR, Chapman University, here in the Los Angeles area. And because of that, and because the university gives everybody a Quest 2 for this semester, we were uh, uniquely advantaged by the pandemic and we're able to conduct our classes partly in VR and partly um, using Zoom and bouncing back and forth between the two of them. Because honestly, 
most of the collaboration platforms aren't really ready for you to conduct, you know, a three hour seminar uh, continuously in VR, but headsets don't have the battery power to begin with. And, and they're heavy, right? If anybody's done a long session, you become more and more aware. And that of course degrades the sense of immersion. Um, Zoom has, um, you know, I mean, I have personal Zoom fatigue is real, right? I'll do an interview with somebody. And even though I take notes, a Zoom interview does not stick with me, honestly, as well as a phone interview. That could be my deteriorating brain. There could be a lot of reasons, but I see my students, it's obvious by the end of the week, they're zombies. And I don't know how much they're getting out of it at that point. But the reason we use Zoom is because it has the key features that we need, right? And, and the two of them are one-click invitations. It completely frictionless. Downloads in the background, you don't even know you're doing it. And, and the other one, of course, is screen sharing. I, th I think, the, I mean, yes, it's got all these other nifty things in it, but without those two things, Zoom wouldn't have had the success that it's had. Um, but Zoom doesn't deliver the one thing we all want, which is engagement, right? I can't look you in the eye. I'm staring at a green light. Um, yeah, I have more, not more agency, and more agency, I should say. I have some functionality that I can rely on, um, but it's not enough. Um, yeah, the, oh, one other thing about Zoom, right? Professor, you're on mute has to be the saying of 2020 uh, since people heard it, you know, 400 times. Um, so this is my class. We were, uh, when we were forced into the pandemic, uh, we started to do class in VR and we decided let's do a survey of all the VR collaboration sites and it uh, resulted in this book. Um, what the class and I did was we hopped around to all these different worlds. Here you see a few examples um, and some places that we will uh, be visiting in our seminar. And we started to go from place to place to place, trying to understand what the features were, trying to speak to the entrepreneurs and, and engineers behind it, figure out how it worked and what the challenges are. And after that, I started to do it for executive groups. And here are some of the brands from the companies. Sometimes it would be a company group. Sometimes it would be a mixed group. Um, we went to probably one third or one quarter of the platforms we're going to go to in the seminar. Here's uh, some of the key places that we're going to be visiting. And it's no coincidence that we have with us today uh, representatives from Engage, uh, Verbella, and Spatial. Uh, here's just a look at a few of them. Uh, Verbella is a third-person experience, more like a video game, more like Second Life. You operate an avatar, you navigate a 3D world like you would a video game through a 2D screen. Um, here's Engage. Engage has a lot of features, a lot of different environments. Engage has been around for four years, I think. Um, so they've had a good opportunity to build features into this platform uh, and they're consistently uh, improving. And here you see two examples of how it's being used. Uh, here's Flow, right? Flow, interesting. Um, most of the people in the simulation in Flow uh, are not as articulated as these avatars are. One of the things that's interesting that we explore is how important are avatars? And I may be talking to the group uh, about the um, the panel about that. Uh, here's Glue, a little more cartoony, sort of like Facebook Horizon and another collaboration site that we like called Arthur. Um, Altspace VR, we're all familiar with. Altspace is, is uh, getting renewed popularity for a lot of reasons. One is that it's very easy, and this is also true of spatial, uh, very easy to, to take a 3D world that you've built on a game platform and upload it into spatial and then use their avatar system. And of course, they're kind enough to host at that point, which is not um, for a VR site, nothing. Um, talk a little bit about high fidelity in the um, workshop, right? They use audio, spatial audio. Um, there'll be demos, there'll be panels. Uh, some of the other participants um, 
and I just want to point out, I mean, this is, as Ori pointed out, this is a hot category, right? Look at how many companies, and this is a partial list. Let me tell you, if I, I had to start digging in to the special platforms that were made for things like training um, e-commerce, I mean, training e-sports teams remotely, <laughs> Um, you know, that's how specialized some of them get. Here's an example of some private spaces, um, hubs. Again, you can upload your own space, use their avatar system. Um, here's the wild. We're not going to go there. They just bought Prospect and uh, they are, this is a system for building 3D mo architectural models and then being able to walk around. It's into, integrated into um, the Autodesk suite. Uh, which is made primarily for the architecture, uh, engineering, and design industries. One thing we came up with, and we provide to participants a, a grid that lays out what are the features that all these platforms have. And uh, in our last in our last weekend workshop, um, the head of business development or business, I should say, for globally for spatial, Jacob Lowenstein. Uh, explained uh, the same thing, that everybody is headed toward the same set of features, right? So the feature set may not be the key way we end up differentiating these sites. You know, these are the things that you have to have in order to credibly be a business collaboration platform. Not everybody has these, but everybody has them on their roadmap if they don't, that's why it was difficult to make the grid, right? Because some people are like, well, by the time Charlie publishes his grid, I will have live streaming options. So when he asks me, I'm just gonna say yes. They're very hard, it's a moving target, that's all. Um, as I said, we need to look at what the, we drilled down on some of these differentiating features uh, because every company um, is able to look at this category as a, buy or I guess rent versus build. Now there are some things that, that can't be built, right? A avatar system like Verbella's that can accommodate over a thousand simultaneous users is a non-trivial thing that you'll not be able to build yourself. But if you wanted to build a room with a bunch of chalkboards that was easy to access, you could do that on old space VR with a minimum of engineering knowledge. So uh, it just depends on what kind of a company, what kind of a group you have. Uh, a number of companies use multiple platforms. That was a big thing that, that we learned when writing the book, that there was no one who said, I'm a spatial person or I am a Verbella person. Many of these companies were using multiple platforms and, and different departments like different platforms. So again, very few companies with the exception of um, EXP Realty, which owns Verbella and has never had a physical office. They have always had their offices in Verbella. Uh, it is a very global company and, and very decentralized. Uh, and it was a brilliant solution for that business and a big part of its success. So uh, here are some of our uh, sponsoring companies, people helping us to uh, provide content to the workshop, as well as um, some of our best destinations are um, also uh, helping us to spread the word. So that's my introductory, um, introductory remarks. Obviously, I will give a much more uh, in-depth lecture about this and other topics. Uh, during our seminar, because I love to talk at a little green light. That is my thing. Uh, anyway, thanks. Thanks for listening. Let me introduce the panel because we've got some great people again from, from uh, sites that I spend a lot of time on, uh, not only as a teacher, but, um, you know, sometimes I meet with um, other colleagues and uh, friends on some of these platforms. So it's a quite a lot of fun and quite amazing. Uh, our panelists, uh, let, let me introduce them. Chris Madsen, uh, Head of Business Development for North America for Engage and everything else. Uh, Bree Scully, uh, Head of Communications and Marketing for Spatial and Maya Kumanita, Head of Marketing for Verbella. Thank you for this morning and so generously sharing your knowledge and experience about uh, this space. 
I'm going to start by introducing uh, each of the panelists uh, themselves, and they'll, I believe everybody has a short video, which is great, so we can actually show you what we're talking about rather than uh, trying to describe it verbally. So uh, welcome, Chris, and um, please share with us uh, what you've got to explain in Gage. You betcha. Let's uh, do a screen share here. We all experience the world in unique ways. Through our senses, we gather information and build cognitive process to understand concepts. This is how we learn. But what if we could push these boundaries past our physical world? What if you could communicate with anyone in the world, yet feel like you were in the same room? If you could meet and learn from teammates globally, sharing media and ideas, or jump into a simulated training. But the real test is being able to do the right thing in a stressful situation. To gain a deeper understanding of the task at hand. I'm just squeezing the trigger to squeeze the bag. You have ventilated the baby, and now it's time to reassess. Please fasten your seatbelt, sir. Creating real-world scenarios, improving employee knowledge and skills. Exactly, plant another tree. And this time we put it up the top. Imagine if quality education was accessible to all, regardless of geographical location. Large hazard and increase the risk to these big cities. What if no field trip is too far or impossible? That is so right. amazing. I, I feel like applauding. <laughs> yeah, we have a lot of fun. As you can see, you know, um, we take it a little bit beyond the uh, uh, standard office meetings. You know, it's, uh, it's about, all about experience for us and building experiences on the Engage side. Great. Well, th thank you for that. Bree, do you want to share with us uh, a bit about spatial? Absolutely. Go ahead and share my screen. It used to be that if you really wanted to jam on an idea or get creative, you'd get in a room with someone, even to the extent that you'd take a flight to do that. With Spatial, with AR and VR, we can put on a headset, and even if we're not in the same room as someone, we can feel like we are. From a simple 2D photo, you get a super realistic avatar. You can create these project rooms, kind of like a 3D version of Zoom meets Slack. Pull up all the kind of traditional content that you're used to, organize your thoughts. Spatial gives you like a visual, virtual way to bring all that together. Great. Thanks for sharing that, Bree. Um, very exciting stuff. I've been following and writing about Spatial since before the launch. I've known Jacob Lowenstein um, way back in his uh, early Samsung days, and it is remarkable how quickly the company has iterated itself. Spatial is a great story, everybody, because when they started out uh, three years ago, you know, the vision was Magic Leap and HoloLens everywhere, and you would have a computer in front of you also, and it would be like everybody was in a room together. And suddenly when it became clear that neither of those things was gonna happen, the company had to hustle around to where people were going, which was to smartphones and to different kinds of VR headsets. And they had to find a way to build this remarkable cross-platform um, collaboration space where you can bring up all sorts of windows. Some people are in VR, some people are in AR. A lot of people are on desktops and smartphones and it's just turned into beautiful chaos. So uh, filled with features. So congrats. I think the video really brought that home. Um, and uh, finally, we've got Maya Kumanina from Verbella. Uh, also a fantastic story was developed by a guy named Alex Howland as part of his graduate work in behavioral psychology and in industrial psychology, or business psychology, uh, work, workplace uh, interactions in uh, I think 2012. And uh, he ran into a guy named Glenn Stanford who had ES. 
XP Realty, who thought it was a great idea for the company he was launching. He was a, a very successful real estate broker with Kel Keller Williams back in the day. And so they started collaborating together. And three years later, right, EXP Realty, which is a big public company, was built entirely on Verbella. And three years later, he acquired the company. And I call him lovingly the um, uh, Omar Khayyam who bought uh, Gillette of, uh, of VR. So uh, anyway, what, why don't we take a look at uh, some video from Verbella, Maya, and uh, we can talk more about um, the company and uh, how you guys have just exploded uh, in the past 20 months. Sounds good. Let me upload, or let me share my screen here. And here's a quick intro on what is Verbella for those of you that may not be familiar. Um, but as Charlie kind of entered, Verbella builds virtual world uh, virtual worlds and environments for work, education, training, and events. Um, and this is a quick look at uh, Verbella's, uh, at Verbella, here you go. Connecting remotely should be liberating, not exhausting. What if being remote was just as productive and fun as being together? Welcome to Verbella, where remote feels more together than ever. Verbella builds immersive virtual worlds, engineered for your exact needs, with support for thousands of people. Create your own office culture, dive into new ideas in classrooms, and throw one-of-a-kind virtual events and trade shows. Founded by organizational psychologists to redefine the future of work and education, Verbella gives you a virtual campus to create the deeply social and collaborative place people are missing. Our customers have the flexibility to operate entirely remotely. They save money on real estate and travel, hire the best talent, and keep people happy and secure. The new normal, the next normal, just normal, whatever you call it, a digitally transformed world of working, learning, and meeting is here. And it's powered by Verbella. Ready to get started? Book a tour on verbella.com today. Great. Thank you very much, Maya. Um, tell us, tell us uh, as we start our panel now, tell us uh, a little bit about um, the kind of growth that Verbella has experienced since the onset of the pandemic. I know you guys had a lot of momentum going into the pandemic. So it's not like you started doing this because you realized that people had to stay home from work. So uh, a lot of people started to discover Verbella quickly. Uh, tell us what it's been like. Yeah, the last year, I mean, as you kind of introed, um, we've been working with EXP Realty, our, our, our sister company, um, for, for several years now. And, you know, at the onset of the pandemic uh, last year, we saw this really big insurgence and opportunity in the event space. Um, there was obviously the events industry was like, really saw a transformation. And so uh, one of the areas that we we really kind of tapped into, we introduced an entirely new revenue stream uh, around virtual events. And we're really able to bring people into the platform to host um, everything from conferences, career fairs, holiday parties. We even had a bar mitzvah in the platform. So just like a lot of really, you know, uh, and because our platform can really host, um, uh, you know, everything from smaller groups to thousands of people, it was a really unique venue and a really unique opportunity for people to really bring their, you know, their traditionally in-person events online. Um, I think we hosted more than 450 events in our platform last year within Verbella as well as with our partners. So, I mean, that started with zero to 450. It was a really, really cool opportunity um, to, to bring that to life. Um, and then obviously um, in the enterprise side of things, we, we saw a lot of companies that were looking to obviously recreate their, you know, recreate, bring their organization together in a way and to recreate and maintain their culture online. Um, in a, you know, everybody had to really adapt really quickly. And so we were able to help organizations come together online and, and really create a sense of uh, community and presence for them uh, within the platform, whether it was through, you know, their virtual office um, or their private campus in Verbella. How many companies now have virtual offices in Verbella? Oh gosh, I don't have an exact number, but it, we Dozens or hundreds? Oh, hundreds, yeah. <laughs> that's, that's, that's great. Um, Chris, let me take it over to you. Um, Engage, as we saw from your, your video, um, has a, it seems, specialty in education in particular, but also corporate training. 
Um, but you guys now have been doing huge events too. I think HTC has uh, used you for some of its conferences and represents you. Um, HTC Enterprise represents you in certain parts of the world. So um, tell us tell us a little bit about uh, how the events business has gone for for you uh, over the past year and um, and what we can hope to see uh, coming in the future. Yeah, so that was a, a real interesting pivot to us as well, because, you know, we've been primarily known as educational um, and training platform. And uh, like uh, uh, Verbella pointed out, the pandemic hits and everybody's looking for alternatives for events because they can't do it in the physical space. And our phones have just been, re it's hard to keep up. Let's put it that way. It used to be, you know, 90% uh, of my time was cold calling and and educating people about VR, that's completely done a 180. And now it's, you know, maybe 5% cold calling and just trying to keep up with phone calls. So events are huge. This is what people are craving. And what we specialize in is doing really, really highly customized events. Let me give you an example. Uh, we have a, a partner, Fuzzy Brick, um, that does hybrid events and they use Engage for a lot of these. We have a, a corporate uh, that wanted to do this event with their employees and they did a James Bond theme where the CEO's flying in on a helicopter, his shoe rings, he pulls off his shoe and is taking the phone call. They open a secret cave and they go down underground and there's all the employees' pictures, most wanted pictures on the wall. And it's just this incredible experience, right? And experiences is what we're really going after with Engage. Whether it's a training experience, whether it's a uh, entertainment experience or a corporate event. What everybody always talks about is that wine and cheese social at the end of those events where they can interact and have this great experience. That's what people remember about these VR experiences. Uh, yeah, I was recently speaking at the Education Educators in VR conference, and and we retired to the conference yes. hall, and and everybody hung out in little groups just like they do at real conferences. So uh, that that was quite extraordinary. So um, con congrats on a great year and, and continued success, um, Bree. Let's talk a little bit more about Verbella. You guys had some success right away with with some companies, particularly in the design area, uh, helping them collaborate remotely. And then recently, it seems like um, you guys are hosting art galleries and doing things that, that are a little more just broadly social. Uh, can, can you tell us about that? I was surprised to hear from Jacob a few weeks ago uh, that your social business had kind of unexpectedly uh, kind of exploded as you've been adding features to the platform. Yeah, I mean, hugely. I think that there's um, you know, we actually ended up changing like our, our tagline to remove the word work because of how much people are doing unwork related things in spatial. Um, it's really amazing the variety of things we've seen people doing. But I mean, over this past year, like I think a few months ago, we put out like a press release that it was like, oh, people will spend 8 million minutes in spatial. By the time that actually was printed, it was already at 9 million minutes. But what we've really seen be incredible is there was, you know, the NFT community, um, you know, became a hot topic, a popular culture. And we have seen just so many artists, like first organically just to coming into spatial to, you know, host their private ateliers. And so we have kind of just embraced the community. They came to us and, you know, want to be hosting these galleries. And we've seen just a tremendous amount of them um, really loving spatial. So um, tons of gallery openings this month. So um, follow one question. Uh, is there, of course, it's great that this, you know, sort of you've had this unexpected flow of people who just like spatial uh, as, as a place to socialize. And again, I think part of it is, is that you can bring in, pop up all these browser windows, which means you can watch video together, you can play video games, and it just adds this whole sort of window uh, into uh, spatial. Uh, and I said, as I said to you at the beginning, you can use Zoom while you're in the spatial because you can bring that browser in. Do you find people are doing that? Is that something people are interested in video with, with the virtual? Yeah. So, I mean, we have people, you can just share your video directly into spatial without using Zoom at all, but we definitely have people that take advantage of, we have both screen share and then a separate app called Spatial Cast which allows you to directly mirror your um, 
your screen in really, really high audiovisual quality. People will have like, you know, movie screenings um, or mm-hmm. just really work together. And of course you can have multiple people all doing that at once, um, which is really amazing. Maya, do you see, I know that Verbella is a hybrid platform, right? You have people who speak, uh, who are, you know, essentially sitting virtually in an auditorium. How, how popular is that as an application? You mean the the blending of kind of yeah. like showing your screen? I think it brings a sense of kind of physical to the virtual, which is, you know, and a lot of people like to do it. But then what's real, also really interesting, we find that people d- don't necessarily want to turn their video on when they're in Verbella because they really enjoy just kind of connecting through the virtual world. And, and really, it's a different sense of connectivity than when you have your camera turned on. I think when you have your camera turned on, it's just a face talking to. Um, but somehow with, with the avatars within Verbella, you really get a sense of kind of space and, and, a, and a sense of connectivity in a different way. Um, it, it's, been, it's been really exciting. But obviously, Verbella does have integrations with, you know, with different partners, and you can share your screen, and you can kind of bring it to life in different ways. And we definitely see that happening. Can we use Verbella on a smartphone? How cross-platform is it in that sense? Um, we are, so um, we are working to make Verbella, obviously we kind of, we believe that in order for virtual worlds, for businesses specifically to kind of see that mass adoption, they need to be frictionless and accessible on every device. And so we are working to kind of make that accessible. One way that we're doing that is we're actually, um, we're, we're, uh, we just released uh, our beta of Frame publicly and Frame is our browser-based uh, technology. And we're really kind of testing and pushing the limits of VR tech and browser-based VR tech and exploring new ways to help people kind of connect virtually. And, and Frame is really our solution for, for the mobile device right now. And so we'll definitely see that right. kind of merging and crossing, but that's kind of where, where our browser- Frame, Frame is, is, is a WebXR program, so you get, so no big download, no download at all. And and anybody with a browser gets there, whatever device has the browser, they they yeah. can participate. Exactly. Yeah. So Verbella is Verbella is based on Unity. And so there is a download, you you download a client to your PC or Mac, and you can have thousands of people in a simple campus. Um, and you know, Frame was built to be kind of like that instant, instant access browser-based technology um, and, and, and is, is for smaller groups of people, but we're obviously working that, that, that number keeps growing and growing as the team keeps developing the product. So if Verbella is based on Unity, I know that, that some, uh, that you develop custom worlds for people. Mm-hmm. Do people want to develop their own or do you do all that for them? Yeah, I mean, we work with, we work with the client. It really depends on, on what they're looking for. Um, I mean, you can, there's, you can have your own private, you can have your own private campus in Verbella and really make it what you need it to be and really customize that world based on the needs of your organization. I mean, if you're a, an enterprise, whether you're a school, um, I know um, uh, we have, we're able to customize that in different ways to make it look and feel like your actual college or, or work campus. Um, and then obviously Frame is, is, uh, is, is also highly customizable as well. So uh, bringing the question over to Engage, Chris, I've noticed I'm, I'm a, you, you'd love um, Engage because I'm an educator, right? And it's just, it's really built for that. And there's so many features that help with that. But one thing I've noticed over the past year or six months is that you guys are also adding a lot of building features and promoting the customizability of um, Engage. In fact, I wrote about um, Victory VR, which is one of your education partners, uh, added Morehouse College, and their professors were able to customize their classroom and bring in models that were related to the subject matter. Um, and so, do you have to know Unity? How how does that uh, those building tools work? So this is what we're going for: is to allow people to build these amazing experiences that don't have a tech technical background, such as myself. I come from a behavioral science background. The fact that I can go in there and create these amazing experiences, like you saw the oil rig exploding and and the helicopters coming in and stuff, 
I can build that stuff using our editor. And our editor isn't a great, you know, a lot of people don't realize that's there. They're like, what is this editor? The editor allows you to do pretty much whatever your imagination wants it to do. You can build all kinds of crazy experiences with that. And we do have an SDK for partners that are familiar with wor working in Unity, such as Victory XR. They use our SDK to bring in all of their content directly onto the platform. And uh, we're working at uh, making that more widely publicly accessible um, over the next few months. So, uh, yeah, you know well, how it is, Charlie. You're in there throwing up birds and doing all kinds of crazy stuff. I watch you doing the magician stuff in there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, we uh, as you said, uh, have some fun in Engage, which uh, is incredibly, incredibly important to student engagement. Um, so one of the things, Brie, speaking of bringing in uh, environments that are made uh, on other platforms, but I know that you guys are compatible with literally dozens of 3D platforms, and it is quite easy to bring in models. In fact, so easy that you guys keep a, a 20 people design shop, M2 Studios in Dallas, uh, almost exclusively, vert <laughs> exclusively working for you and your clients to create uh, custom 3D environments. Um, has that become sort of a must have feature for a collaboration platform? So I think that, so Spatial, we release like a new environment that's like a default environment on like a monthly basis, but definitely people really, of course, enjoy bringing in their own spaces. It's all about making it feel like it's something that they have ownership over, that they feel, you know, connected to. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, we work really closely with M2 Studios. They're awesome um, and help a lot of our users get their space just the way they like it um, and bring in that custom, that custom experience. So, Here's a question that I think uh, would be interesting for the audience because the avatar systems on all three platforms are completely different, right? Um, I, I mean, one of the things about Spatial that everybody loves is that they take your social media presence and, and apply it to a 3D avatar. So that always gives everybody a, what? <laughs> uh, and then uh, Engage has, has rather realistic-ish uh, avatars, sort of um, the graphic novel version of you. You have a lot of customization options. And, and then, of course, in, in Verbella, uh, it's business dress only, uh, although they have uh, added some neat customization uh, options as well. Uh, somebody, my class students like to joke that I look the same in any platform. So uh, thank you all for accommodating bald. Um, but um, but really, after the first few times you use the platform, you know, the avatars start to be less important. But, but my, how important do you think they are generally to collaboration platforms and then uh, the philosophy about around your own avatars? It's really interesting when I when I first joined for Bella, I intuitively I didn't think the avatars, I, this was a very new industry to me. I kind of was like, I didn't really think it'd make that much of a difference to be to be honest with you. But quickly, when I went to work every day, because Verbella itself is in Verbella every day, our offices and headquarters are within the platform. So we very much use it day to day in our business operations. And I just found myself getting like more you would just really start to get a sense and feel for that you're in the room with people and that you're you're passing them in the hallways and having those sidebar conversations that you used to get in the office it really kind of recreates that office feel and so much that um and and kind of how that translates into the real world i recently met some of my colleagues for the first time in person um, after almost a year of working together in a virtual world and it was really interesting because there was not we didn't miss a beat like we kind of just felt like we knew each other i think when you're kind of on a video call all day there's still a little bit of that sense of awkwardness because you kind of don't feel like you know each other but because we were in this virtual world together and really sharing in these experiences and in a physical, in like a virtual office together, we were able able just to like really pick up where we left off in Verbella in the real world and and have a productive time together. So um, definitely, obviously, changed my mind and um, and kind of the impact of avatars. And then it's obviously I get you know you just kind of get excited to like change your outfit when a new Halloween theme comes up or something. We get we we have fun in Verbella and and do different themes to kind of get people excited about 
about um, engaging with their avatars. How many people use their default avatar versus a customized one? That's a great question. There's a way in Verbella just to kind of do like an auto um, yes. spit out an outfit. That's what I'm asking about. Yeah, yeah you know, that's a gr- that's a great question. I think that would be a good statistic. I'll go back <laughs> to the team for. <laughs> okay, Chris. Uh, here's here's a good question about um, engage specifically. Um, how big of a problem is the, you know there's the realistic avatars but no eye contact, right? The the eyes are you, you know you don't blink, you don't feel like you know people are looking in your direction but they're looking in quotes because you can't make eye contact. Should do you guys think do you think personally and and both on behalf of engage that somehow that should be improved? Ah, so engage is interesting in that if you're on a PC or a tethered experience, you are going to get that eye movement. You're going to get the oh. eye blinking, and it's uh, very important, actually. You know, uh, to get that sense the, that you're present with someone else, uh, super important. Unfortunately, uh, with the quest to untethered, you're only going to see the host in that form. So when you're looking at the host, you'll see the full body avatar, the real face, and you'll get those subtleties. We are complete, that's one of our big updates coming up is a complete revision from the ground up with our avatar system. Um, 30% uh, uh, processing power compared to the other version, which is gonna allow us to have, you know, many, many more avatars visible as full bodies, which everybody's asking for, right? It's like, I want what the PC users are having. Yeah. Um, well, it is a little bit weird um, to uh, just see half of a, a person. I agree. I'm ready for all the full bodies. <laughs> so, but uh, uh, Bree, moving on to the avatars for spatial. I mean, there's there's a big oh wow, particularly for for first time users. Um, t- tell us about um, how that the avatars uh, are driving the business and what you're thinking about uh, them going forward. Yeah, I mean, I think that our avatars look looking and feeling like yourself when you're in spatial makes a huge difference. Um, being able to immediately recognize people. Um, there are people that, you know, back before the pandemic, you know, when I would meet people in spatial and then see them at like a, a conference or something, I would immediately know who they are because they look like themselves as their avatar. There's no, you know, kind of bridging that barrier. They just, they look like them. Um, and that's, I think, really special. And especially people like feeling like they are there with their team, um, you know, having that immediate like, oh, like this is kind of like we're in a real space because you look like you and feeling embodied in that way, I think is really important. And of course, facials were working um, to make it as, you know, more and more lifelike and realistic. Um, we've done a lot of, um, you know, research into um, you know, face tracking, et cetera. Um, we did, a, we even launched another app called, called Telly. If you want to play with some of the things we, we, we researched, um, like that, you know, we'll do use the phone to track your face, um, really getting that expression, um, across as much as possible, I think is what's, what's really important. Pivoting slightly. We've only got a little bit of time left and I want to get to some of the great questions and comments that are showing up in the chat, but what can you tell us about um, Spatial's business model? I know it's mostly free up to a point. Uh, At what point do I wanna start paying for it? And what are you thinking about pricing going forward? Right, so I think that as Spatial has changed this year, we've definitely been, you know, we had a big shift towards people joining with our pro tier, um, whereas previously we were very enterprise focused. Um, so that was a, a tier that was added this year, but um, we really highly encourage everyone to start on the free version and we, you know, make as many features as possible available on the free version. The beginning reasons why you would want to start, you know, paying for spatial would be if you want more control, like our, our host tools, if you're hosting an event and you want full control of that environment, you don't want people to be able to add their own content or, you know, m- being able to mute everybody, for example, um, that's when it becomes really important. Um, As well as one of our um, really amazing um, pro tools is speech captions. You can do live translation across 40 different languages. Um, So for people who are internationally, we have a lot of like globally distributed teams um, being able to communicate that way. Um, 
and I could go on, but those are, those are, I think the, the two big things and, um, for a pro. And then of course, um, you know, the more people you have involved, we have our, our enterprise pricing. Chris, um, I actually pay for Engage. Now that is not on purpose. I don't like paying for Engage. I asked David Whalen last time I was interviewing him uh, to give me a free account. And he said, no, because then no one would believe all the nice things you say about us. So that's what I get for being nice to, uh, to a company. But uh, in all seriousness, you have a very kind of complex and multifaceted uh, pricing and, and business model. By the way, uh, both Verbella through EXP Realty and um, uh, Engage are uh, both publicly traded companies. Uh, so just an aside to anyone listening, I have a buy on both of them. <laughs> As, as you can tell, I'm very enthusiastic about this sector, but the pricing uh, differences in between the companies are, are quite distinct. So uh, I'm, I'm hoping you can um, share sort of the subtleties of that with uh, regard to Engage. Yeah. So, so we have a three-tiered system. Uh, we have free users, uh, which are quite limited in what they can do. Um, you know, um, they can only open a private room. They can't open a public space, et cetera. You know, pretty limited, but it gives them a good taste. And they can attend uh, various uh, events to really get a taste of what's going on. Uh, the pro feature right now, it's uh, five bucks a month. And that actually gives you access to most of the bells and whistles on the platform. Uh, that's what most people People go for. And by the way, uh, having a pay for play model significantly reduces, you know, the troubles that you might see in a platform like VR chat, where there's just crazy stuff and trolling and all that stuff goes. So it, that's very, very minimal on the platform, which we appreciate. Um, and then lastly, there is the enterprise level, and that's divided into different categories. We have special educational um, enterprise in educational accounts we have enterprise and we have commercial accounts so obviously the difference is we want to cater to students who might be limited on the number of headsets that they're sharing so we have a um you know a multi-user model based on that particular model and then uh, with enterprise it's a one-to-one -one and it opens up all you know gives you access to the sdk gives you access to customized content you get your shirts for your avatars it goes on and on and then the commercial is an interesting one because then it allows people to actually make money using the platform for business use cases whether they're running their own events or doing product demos or running their own training programs, uh, they can basically take Engage and just run with it for their own purposes and make money using the platform. Great. Maya, let's wrap up with uh, with Verbella. Yeah, so there's there's kind of three different ways that individuals and businesses can kind of buy and use Verbella, and we want to make it as easier as easy for them as possible to use it in a way that suits them. So there's first is anyone can can hop into open campus for free. Um, you can run your own events there. We can set you up with the team there to do that. We hope we also host a lot of different events um, and are just looking to kind of drive general awareness about the industry and our platform. So we're hosting a lot of different events there, which you can attend for free as well to get a feel for, for the different things you can do in the platform. Uh, the second way is you can buy your own private office space um, with an easy swipe of your credit card. Um, those, those are our team suites um, and great for people who are looking for a private office space. And then uh, third is kind of like, is, is, is if your organization is really looking to, um, to really recreate Rebella in its own private way. And those are our, you can de deploy your own private campus for your company, school, or event um, in your, and that's kind of the traditional enterprise sales process. So um, kind of trying to make it, want to make, a, you know, our open campus is, is open and accessible to all to really come and get people in the door. And then we can kind of assess your needs from there. And then obviously on the frame side, which we which we launched recently, that is also free to users um, to go in and experience as well. Got a question for you, uh, Maya, from uh, specifically for you, from my friend, Nicole uh, Lazaro. She wants to know, how can you create an office culture in Verbella? Yeah, I, I saw that come through. It's a great question. I think, um, we believe that the future is about persistent virtual communities and we're really working to create that within Verbella. And so the office culture is obviously evolving. Um, everyone's trying to adapt to this 
hybrid world. Some people are going back into the office. Some people are not going back into the office. How does an organ, this is keeping CEOs and leaders up at night. Like how do you, how do you manage this? How do you create a, a sense of culture with the workforce that's all over the place? And so we're really helping, you know, our goal is to help them kind of help them. That's the problem we're solving for is to help bring people together in a virtual way and create a sense of social and spatial presence where you can really feel like you belong to something and that you're part of an organization and that the people who are in the office are getting the same experience as the people who are working remotely um, and that you're able to really grow and share experiences together and innovate together and really drive your business forward. Uh, Bree, here's an interesting question. Somebody was asking about whether people were using um, any of these applications or specifically spatial for real estate walkthroughs, right? You're bringing in 3D models. Why can't you bring in a 3D model of a home or an office and have somebody walk through inside of spatial? Um, so, I mean, there's nothing really stopping you from doing that. We, the limitation there is that we, one of our common feature requests these days is asking to be able to move vertically. So right now spatial is one plane. Um, so you can bring in like, uh, you know, we have a lot of people bring in store plans. We have a lot of people that, you know, bring in, you know, planning their, you know, their homes, actually even our, our, um, our leadership, there's a couple of them bought houses through the pandemic and like, we're like planning them out in spatial. Um, and so there's, you can definitely do that. Um, and, but there are other, I mean, there are other applications that are like very, very niche to that sector. So it's not necessarily something like, you know, we're not going to be the company that's going to build out, like looking at your HVAC plans in, in spatial, but if you want to, you know, bring in a space, it can be any space, you know, you can be on Jupiter or you can be in your living room. Um, and so it, you could do anything in between. Um, I have a comment uh, and I think it's a really good one. Two different people made this point. Um, one, one person pointed out that not having real eye contact is an advantage to people who have social anxiety who find it very freeing. Uh, and then um, Dave uh, Bostarnik, if I pronounced that right, points out that uh, in certain cultures, of course, it's much easier to appear virtually. Um, I, I suppose he's, he teaches uh, in the UAE. So that's a great example of a um, Middle Eastern culture uh, where it's not so easy for women to get around. So uh, that is a great solution. I would also say on the subject of virtual conferences um, that when you start to get into a high number of avatars, you start to have terrible sound problems. And so what companies do, uh, and this is true of both Verbella and Engage, is they start to degrade the avatars in favor of using the compute power uh, for audio and spatial audio, which is very, very hard to maintain once you uh, start getting into large number of users. So uh, interesting, interesting uh, innovations uh, and interesting comments. Um, going back to some of my own questions, and if I missed a question of yours, please repost it uh, in the chat. We only have a uh, few more minutes, um, but Bree, we're on you. Uh, you're in my spotlight. So uh, let me ask you one of my speed final questions. Uh, what's on your roadmap that you're most excited about in terms of upgrades for spatial? It's uh, a question. So I think I'm really um, excited about lobbies that we're hosting. So right now spatial, we have, um, you know, it's all separate rooms. Um, and we wanted to create that's a space where you can, you know, be in a central location and move to, between your different rooms, like conference rooms um, in VR. And of course, we started with this idea of like, okay, like I'm going to go to this room and then this this room of like content bundles, especially starting as in uh, as a company that started in augmented reality and then moved to virtual reality. Um, and so that's I think is going to be really fun, and we intend on having public ones so that anybody can go and hang out there. Um, so I'm really excited about that. Chris, same question to you. What what upgrades? I know, you know, all these platforms are continually iterating. So so what's on your roadmap, Chris? Um, I would say, Charlie, the biggest thing where I think things are really going to come together is when we give every user the same ability that we're giving to our current 
partners. Um, and that is the ability to upload any content they want anytime from something as simple as a cell phone. Like right now, on my uh, when I'm doing tests, I could just sit there and live, just start uploading, you know, 3D models from Microsoft Paint or upload transparencies from the internet. Just, you know, we really want to get to this place where we are doing everything real time. And you know, it's not that far down the road where we're going to be able to just speak things into existence. Give me a red Porsche. And boom, there's a red Porsche there. I mean, this is what we're all moving towards. So I'm looking forward to our next releases when we can give these kind of real-time powers to, to clients. Let's see. Oh, here's a question from Gina Hartnett. Does do any of you guys work with the Department of Defense or with the U.S. or, or with government? What what are the unique requirements of that, Chris? Yeah, so uh, we actually, you know, we're an Irish-based company, so we actually go through U.S. partners uh, to get into that SAMS network. You know, there's different uh, Fed uh, systems that you need to be involved in to capture some of those. Like we work with the uh, Utah State Department of Education um, and Cultural Affairs, doing some great work with them, bringing in, you know, photogrammetry of, of like the Jefferson uh, Monument we just brought in for them that looks amazing. But yeah, it is a, it is a challenge to get into those systems. There's a lot of pre-work that you have to do to get in, but uh, certainly a lot of opportunities uh, there within those systems. Here's a question uh, from Lori, and uh, I'm gonna direct this to you, Maya, because the answer is yes to Lori's question. Can any of these platforms work with interactive 3D models? Um, I know that Spatial and Engage can. Can we do that on Verbella also? Yeah, um, specifically, uh, yes. And then also specifically with frame, um, that is that is possible as well. Hans asks an interesting question. I'll, I'll ask it to all you guys, but starting with you, Maya. Uh, what's the percentage? So does anybody use Verbella in VR? We support VR, but Verbella is best used on your desktop. Um, and so that's really how we see the majority of our users using Verbella. Um, and then obviously on the frame side as well, we're seeing more and more uh, VR headset engagement as well. Um, in that so Brie, Bree, same question, percentage of headset users versus flat screen and smartphone users. I don't know if I know the exact percentage. I mean, I think we definitely see a lot of people come in via mobile or um, web first and then, you know, grow into using um, headsets. But uh, I think that it's just, it's really important to have both especially because there are so many people who are enthusiasts and then there are so many people who are so new to this. So um, I would say that, and also for spatial, um, a lot of our, our, our app and our web app work as kind of companion tools, um, like to really easily bring in content and um, our integrations. So um, hard to say. <laughs> Um, well, that brings us up to the 10 o'clock hour. Thank you to all of our participants and uh, particularly to our panel members. Uh, great chatting with you guys. I know that we're going to uh, speak with you guys again during the weekend workshop, and I'm really looking forward to continuing the conversation. And with that, I'll turn it over to AWE Education for final remarks about the workshop and today's seminar. Uh, all right. Thank you, everyone, so much for joining us. Thank you, Charlie. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Maya. Thank you, Bree. Um, this has been wonderful. Um, we're hoping that many of you will be able to join us um, for Charlie's workshop on uh, June 5th and 6th. Um, as he mentioned, Maya, Chris, and Bree will all be joining us um, for that. You'll get a chance to, to spend time with them in World and all of these platforms. Um, learn about those. Uh, if you uh, check out um, the, uh, the website, the web page for the, the class, we dropped that in the chat. You can see our full list of guest speakers, download the syllabus, um, get more information. And uh, thank you everyone again. Mm -hmm.